Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 32, part B, and I'm going to talk about the Maxwell-Boltzmann speed distribution. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to get the average scalar speed. To, I'd like to draw your attention to my video, my excuse me, my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous video to this was number 32, where I derived the scalar speed distribution for Maxwell-Boltzmann classical particles. Uh, right. So the formula I derived was was this one here. Now, we'll do a small bit of revision. What does this mean? Well, remember when we spoke about calculating um, the number of particles in a system, capital N. What we did was we integrated the number density, well, let's say in terms of energy, with respect to energy, between zero and infinity. And we got the total number of particles. In order to get the total energy, sorry, now that's the total average energy, we integrated once again between zero and infinity, the the number density, this time times the, the energy, and integrated dE. Now, the interesting point here, and the very important point, is this is the average energy of a single particle. This is the average energy of a single particle. So in order to get the total average energy of the system, what you would do is you would get the number of particles in your system, multiply it by the average energy of a single particle, and you get the average total energy of your system. Now we're going to assume that fluctuations are very small in the system, so we say that this is approximately the total energy of your system. So the point is this, if you have the average energy of a single particle, and you multiply it by the total number of particles, then we, we can say approximately that you have, the, uh, the, you have the total energy of your system. Now just also I suppose you to remember that I've previously done videos where we did discrete states, G sub S, and where we had to sum them, but we went from summation to integrals and as a result we went to the density of states rho and we also went from having n sub s to n of epsilon or n of rho or whatever it is all right so that's the important point here so if you get that that's how you get the average energy now you should be able to understand how we get the average the average velocity or the average speed of a particle so i'm going to use v for speed or even though i probably shouldn't so to get the average speed of a single particle is the exact same thing. You integrate the number density, let's say in terms this time in terms of velocity, and you integrate it times v dv. It is analogous, I suppose, to when we get the to when we got the average energy. We integrated n of epsilon times epsilon d epsilon like that. So it's the exact same thing. Now we also we already have the number density uh, in terms of scalar speed so we just multiply again by another factor of v and integrate away so let's go ahead and do that that means that v bar the average energy of a single particle now what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this factor of n so i'm only going to be talking about a single particle okay this is going to be equal to the integral <coughs> from zero to infinity of m over twice pi kt all to the power of three divided by two we have still the factor of 4 pi. Now, this time we have, we have three factors of v, so for that reason I'm going to write it like this, because we have v times n of v, okay? And then we have our usual exponential, and it's going to write the exponential like this. And we had, of course, dv. So we need to integrate this. Now look, I'm sure you've seen integrals like this before. We know that they're going to be Gaussian integrals, which are a pain in the face. You just look up, I suppose, the answer, unless you really want to be, unless you're a mathematician. The, the trick in order to make it look like a Gaussian integral is to do a uh, substitution or change a variable. So we let v squared is equal to twice uh, kt over m times x squared. Okay, so that means that dv, okay, we know that of course is dv del v del x dx. We know that, but so let's just write down the answers. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. If you're watching this video, you can do this pretty straightforward. So dv is equal to the square root of twice kt divided by m and then we have the factor of dx out front okay so what I'm going to do is plug all of that into my integral and let's see what we get so we get the average energy for a single particle is equal to 4 pi outside of uh, square root m over 2 pi kt Right, and this is cubed. Just need to be careful with your algebra, it's not particularly difficult. Okay, then we have the square root of 2k 
t over m, which also, believe it or not, has this cubic factor or this cubed factor here. We have the square root of 2kt over m. And finally, we have the integral. Now, um, we'll say the integral itself. So the integral is going to be equal to x cubed e to the minus x squared dx. All right. Now, I'm telling you, you can look this up. I can't actually remember which Gaussian integral it is, but I know that the answer is a half. All right. So when you plug in that, that's really it. You now have the average energy of a single particle. Clearly, of course, there's a bit of manipulation and cancellation of, of numbers, but essentially what you get is the average energy for one single particle is 2 root 2 outside of the square root of kt divided by pi times m. Okay, and finally we can say the average energy for a single particle is equal to 8 kt over pi times m. That's for a single particle. Okay, in order to get the total um, the total average velocity or speed, we'll obviously have to multiply by a factor of n out front. But I'm going to ignore that, ignore that for the moment. Alright, so we have the average energy for the scalar speed of a classical particle obeying Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is the square root of 8 kt over pi times m. So, the next video I'm going to do VRMS. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.